my Olivet Church family. It is a blessing to virtually worship with you today. If you would please, follow and like our Facebook page at the Olivet Church. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the Olivet Church underscore. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Olivet Church dash ATL. And don't forget to start a watch party. I know everyone is eager to see everyone again. I'm praying that we will be back in person real soon. But until then, please stay connected. Brothers and sisters, this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, it is the second week of wonderful Wednesday worship. Yes, it's revival time here at the Olivet Church. And I'm so excited about what God is doing this month as we continue to share together in word and in worship. Listen, we are bringing the best of wonderful Wednesdays into your homes. I mentioned on last week that Olivet has been blessed over the years to have some of this nation's most gifted preachers to grace our pulpit, and you're going to hear from another one of them tonight. And I'm speaking of none other than the Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes. He is the steam pastor of the Friendship West Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas, and he is a much needed voice, a prophetic voice in this particular season. You know, church, I've discovered in every season, in every dispensation, in every period of time, God will always send a prophet. God will always raise up a prophetic voice to shake things up, to speak truth to power. For example, when God wanted to shake up Pharaoh, he sent Moses. When he wanted to shake up Ahab, he sent Elijah. When he wanted to shake up Herod, he sent John the Baptist. When he wanted to shake up Zedekiah, he sent Jeremiah. When he wanted to shake up Nebuchadnezzar, he sent the three Hebrew boys. When he wanted to shake up Pilate, he sent Jesus. And when God wanted to shake up this nation, the United States of America, he sent the Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes. So church, without further ado, I introduce to some and present to others our preacher for the night, the Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes. Now our worship team is coming to prepare our hearts and then we're going to give unto the Lord and I'm asking you to sow at least $20 tonight towards our revival because as I always say, your generous contributions allow us to bring you first class and cutting edge ministry like we are attempting to do tonight. And following that, the next voice you will hear is none other than my friend and my brother, the Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes. Be blessed. Praise the Lord, Olivet family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Wonderful Wednesday. Did you come to give God glory tonight? Wherever you are, if you're at home, come on, you've had a long day. So you might as well get up and move a little bit with us. Hey, if you can't bless the Lord, because you know he's good, and more importantly, he's good to you. Hallelujah. you to get up from your kitchen table, from your sofa, you finish eating dinner, so come on and move with us tonight, hey!
As we stand together in faith, I invite you to remember the reasons for which we have been called. It is the duty of every generation to take the faith granted to us by God and to share it with others. The Lord has chosen us to instruct, assist, and sanctify the world through the proclamation of His Word. This work continues to be accomplished through our outreach programs, biblical teachings, and philanthropic services designed to acknowledge the expanding needs in our community. We are the light in this city. We stand at the intersection of faith and life as we make tangible our mission to know Christ and to make Him known. We know that without you, the people, and God, our efforts would be fruitless and our success would be greatly diminished. Please know that the gifts, your gifts, not only change lives, but open up the hearts of others to Jesus Christ. Olivet, we love you, we thank you, and we stand forever grateful. Giving at the Olivet Church just got a little easier. To use PushPay, text Olivet GIVE to 77977 and follow the prompts. Come on, lift your hands if you want more. Everything that I have, everything that I am, all belongs to Him. And He deserves so much more from you. I give you more. Oh, 
worship her in me wants to be free from the cares of life that seem to weigh me down oh the worship her in me wants to be free to lift my hands and give you praise with no one Oh, the worshiper in me wants to be free From the intellectual mentality Like when I should be up, I'm seated in my seat Lifting my hands and giving you praise and all the glory Her in me wants to be free from the cares of life that seem to weigh me down. Oh, the worshiper in me needs consistency. Like when I lift my hands and give you praise when no one's around. Oh, the worshiper in me wants to be from the intellectual mentality Like when I should be up, I'm seated in my seats Lifting my hands and giving you praise and all the glory I want to give my best to you I want to do, do what you ask me to I want to go Are you deserve
thank you now for this moment that you have arranged to meet us in this sacred space, to experience your presence, to praise your name, to hear from you, and to be revived again. We thank you and praise you for the power of your word, for the fact that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Thank you for your word that speaks to us, that speaks to our situations. And yes, even the spirit of the times, thank you for your word. I make myself available now to be used by you. So please hide me behind the cross and help us to see Jesus. And we'll give you all of the glory and all of the honor. Empty me of myself. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Stand in my body. Take over my mind and think your thoughts. Take my mouth now and speak with power your word. Now bless your word. Give power to your word. Let your word go forth in such a way that none of us leave here the same way we came. Let your word go forth with such power that you do exceeding abundantly above anything I can ask or imagine according to the power at work in me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Our God is good. Our God is worthy of worship. Our God is worthy of what? Total praise. If you know God is worthy of total praise, why don't you right now make a joyful noise under the Lord. All ye land, serve the Lord with gladness. God is good. You may be seated in God's presence. Let me say I'm peacock proud and honeymoon happy uh, to be here uh, during wonderful Wednesdays. And I am specially uh, excited about what God has done in the life of this church and to walk up into this house and see how God again has moved in the life of this church uh, under uh, the sterling and uh, amazing leadership of your pastor, Dr. William Holmes Robinson, uh, who is a gift. Dr. Robinson is a gift and his uh, reputation uh, as a, a vibrant and vital uh, visionary uh, is going forth. I was in South Africa last week and uh, was getting ready to come back uh, to Dallas and some colleagues from the states asked me what my schedule was. Uh, this week I told them uh, about a few other places I'm going. I got to Wednesday and they said, oh yeah, you preaching for Rob. Rob is doing that thing. And so uh, he is uh, spoken of highly and uh, again, I'm just kind of standing here in awe uh, because this is a wonderful uh, testimony uh, to the greatness of God, the faithfulness and leadership of your pastor, and your wonderful commitment uh, to Jesus Christ. And so, uh, man, I just salute you, brother man. Thank you so much. What an honor to be here. And then I want to thank you for not firing me. I didn't get to come last year. And so I felt like I had been fired. And so thank you so much for rehiring me because uh, I love coming here. This is a special place. Uh, and I salute him. I salute his wonderful wife and his amazing princess. The princess. Princess Rob. Amen. I missed her. And she's grown up on me since I've been gone. When I came last time, man, she was all happy to see me. Now she just kind of chill, you know. <laughs> Just chill, just growing up on your boy. Okay, it's cool. I still got love for you. Uh, but again, it's an honor to be here, and I praise God for uh, this wonderful ministry, and I praise God for, for this pastor. I want to call your attention in these few moments to a passage of Scripture found in the book of, in the Gospel according to Luke, Luke chapter 13. And there in Luke chapter 13, beginning at verse 10, we find the words of our text for this message. Luke chapter 13, beginning at verse 10. Thank you to this music ministry. Y'all did the thing. Thank you so much. That was powerful, absolutely powerful. From the New Revised Standard Version translation of the Greek New Testament, hear now God's word. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. 
when he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on one of those days and be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. I want to put a tag on this text and for a few moments with your prayers, I'd like to use as a subject from which to preach, free to shine while others throw shade. You may be seated in God's presence. Free to shine while others throw shade. There are some shady people in this world. They love to throw shade whenever you shine. There are some shady people in this world. Shady people don't feel tall unless they make you feel small. Shady people don't feel healthy unless you are sick. Shady people, in a real sense, my sisters and brothers, will rain on your parade and again throw shade whenever God blesses you to shine. There are some shady people in this world. I believe Fannie Lou Hamer can take the witness stand even from eternity and testify about shady people who will throw shade on your shine. It was June 9th, 1963, and Fannie Lou Hamer had gone to SCLCs, the Southern Christian Leadership Conferences, a uh, conference that was held in, uh, on the uh, Carolina coast. And this particular conference, known as the Citizenship Education Project, was beautifully designed to accomplish a few things. Number one, it was designed to, in a real sense, flush white supremacy out of the system of those African Americans who were in attendance. If you were not careful, uh, white supremacy will infect your own sense of self and then preclude your possibilities, especially since white supremacy is woven into the fabric of these disunited states of America. With that being the case, they assembled there on the Carolina coast and a part of the education involved, watch this, flushing their system of the evil and infection of white supremacy. But not only that, they were at that point allowed to, here it is, redefine themselves for themselves. And how important is that to know how to define you for you? Because if you don't define yourself for yourself, you will be crushed into others' fantasies to use the language of Audre Lord. Yes, my my sisters and brothers, they were taught how to define themselves for themselves, but then finally they were also educated and taught to be agents of social change. Why? Because when God blesses you to be delivered, that deliverance ain't just about you. It's about what God does through you to bring about deliverance in the lives of others. I hope you're feeling me. When God blesses you, God gets blessings to you you in order to get blessings through you. Preach, Freddie Haynes, I already am. And my sisters and brothers, Fannie Lou Hamer had done such a brilliant job of shining during the educational process that she was recognized by those giving leadership such as September Clark and, and others, and they decided that she would be the one to give the speech. Well, on that high moment, Fannie Lou Hamer and others, they got on the bus and they headed back to her home state of Mississippi and once they crossed the state line of Mississippi they were stopped by a police officer for no reason whatsoever but we recognize that policing has in its DNA the slave patrols not to mention the black codes and Jim Clark and Bull Connor why because policing is always used in an empire 
here to be. Here it is, a means of social control. So here it is, they are stopped as they enter the state of Mississippi and they are taken to Winona Jail. When they arrive at Winona Jail, here is what happened. My sisters and brothers, one by one, the persons on that bus were taken to the bullpen there in Winona Jail and they were savagely beaten. Fannie Lou was the last one and so imagine on your in your anointed imagination how she must have felt as she heard the savage brutality that her people were being victimized by and then it was her turn. They brought Fannie Lou into the bullpen area and those, uh, those jailers were so weary from beating the others that they called in some black inmates and they instructed and threatened them that they were to beat Fannie Lou severely and that's what they did. They proceeded to beat her brutally. It was savage. It was inhumane what took place. The beating became so savage that Fannie Lou, my sisters and brothers in the process, her dress went up over her head trying to preserve her dignity. She put the dress back down but those brutal beasts had the nerve to put the dress back up and then they began to sexually violate her. Yes, that's what Fannie Lou experience and the beating after 30 minutes had gone by resulted in Fannie Lou passing out. She passes out when she comes back to. She is in her jail cell but she is so broken and bruised and bloodied that she cannot move. She is severely beaten. A blood vessel has burst in her eye. She's been severely and savagely beaten and the beating is so brutal that Fannie Lou, my sisters and brothers, transparently testified that she was unable to pick herself up. Do you get the metaphor from this tragic beating? The metaphor, my sisters and brothers, is that she is in jail, locked up, and worse than that, she is in such pain. She is handcuffed by hurting helplessness. I got to do that one more time. She's locked up in jail, so she can't go anywhere but to magnify her misery she finds herself here it is bruised and broken and bloodied and as a consequence of the pain that she is a prisoner of she is handcuffed by a hurting helplessness she cannot move and she cannot get up I like that metaphor even though I hate what happened to her because that metaphor reminds me of what took place in the life of the woman in our text, the Bible lets us know that 18 years prior, something demonic had happened in her life. It was demonic and it was devastating. And the book lets us know this demonic, devastating episode that had left her broken and bent double. There it is. She is bent double. She is unable. The Greek says she is helpless to lift herself up. And so she is bent double because of something that happened back then that was still infecting and influencing her right now. Now, I'll park here parenthetically because if you let me keep it 100, all of us have something that happened back then that if you're not careful, it will define and confine who you are right now. All of us have been through something that ain't through with us. Can I do that one more time? You went through it back then but it's not through with you right now. As a matter of fact, it manifests itself in insecurity, guilt, low self-esteem, jealousy. It manifests itself when you are clinging in a relationship. Why? Because something happened back then, but it's still jacking with you right now and getting in the way of your not yet. I'm going to do that one more time. You may want to tweet that. That was kind of hot right there. It happened back then. It's still jacking with you right now and in the way of what you can be in your not yet. Well, since that didn't get y'all, let me keep it moving because the text goes on to say that when Jesus, here it is, the uh, our sable skin savior from the streets, our cinnamon colored Christ from the hood shows up in the synagogue on that Lord's day. The book lets us know that Jesus 
healed her. But when he healed her, there were some shady characters right there in the synagogue. And the shady characters were upholding, here it is, a system that was demonically and diabolically designed to keep this woman oppressed and bound. That's what it was. It was a system. Did you see what the text said? The text said the synagogue ruler got up and had the nerve to throw shade in the direction of Jesus and this healed woman. Ain't that jacked up? He threw shade in the direction of Jesus. Check it out. He's passive aggressive. So he don't try to come directly at Jesus because he can't handle Jesus. And then he decides to come for the woman and says, here it is. If you want to get healed, you got six other days to do that. Why do that on the Sabbath day? Because watch this. He was upholding a system that was oppressive. And that's why I want to hang out for just a moment. Because in many instances, our progress as a people has been precluded, not from people being mean to us, but precluded by a system that is broken. A broken system. You're not getting it. A broken system is manifest in our educational system where our children go to school to get mis- and diseducated and they are taught here it is basically how to function in a white supremacist nation. I'm still not coming through. They are miseducated, not taught who they are, but instead they are taught how to make it in a world where the only way you're going to make it is to use the language of James Baldwin become more and more white and less and less who God made you. I'm still not coming through. Y'all not getting it. It's a system that's manifest economically in a wickedly widening wealth gap. And the wealth gap is so wickedly widening that now you have the greedy oligarchs on Wall Street who are getting over at the expense of those of us in the hood on MLK Boulevard. I'm simply trying to say it is a system whereby the greedy rob the needy. That's why when that pat when that tax bill was passed by 46 minus 1 it was not to benefit this country 46 minus 1 in a real sense engaged in Trump hood and y'all do know that Trump hood is reverse Robin Hood Robin Hood robbed from the rich to give to the poor and Trump hood robs from the needy to give to the greedy you better preach for the Haynes I already am and with that being the case my sisters and brothers it's an economic system that is diabolically designed to keep those of us at the bottom at the bottom and, and, and those at the top at the top I'm still not coming through it's a system in the criminal justice system that in a real sense feeds mass incarceration where you have a policing system on the front lines of this criminal justice system that feeds mass incarceration and you know the policing system is already tilted to the disadvantage of the disadvantage. I live in Dallas, Texas, and I'm sure you have heard that right there in Dallas, a white woman police officer, after working a shift of 15 hours, goes into her apartment complex and lies about what happened because she went to the wrong floor. Y'all ain't in Dallas. Let me tell you what's going on. First of all, my man, both in John who got killed uh, both and John has a red uh, a welcome mat in front of his apartment she does not have uh, a red welcome mat both and John like every other apartment in that complex has here it is numbers over his door and his number ain't her number they're totally different floors and so she lied about what happened but the system uh, is already in motion as the affidavit coming from the Texas Rangers in a real sense is protecting her and setting up her defense already as they have come up with the charge of manslaughter even though she went in there and she shot him to kill him and that's what I call murder and so my sisters and brothers it's a system I'm still not coming through I'll see if I can make this real plain a couple of years ago princess I was preaching up in Connecticut no speaking rather for the 
the NAACP. They had a Freedom Fund banquet. I'm their guest speaker, so I speak for read the uh, NAACP Freedom Fund banquet. But the next day, I was hyped. Why? Because I was going to speak in the Time Warner building in Manhattan, New York, because I had been invited to address a prayer breakfast early that morning. I had a 6 a.m. flight to catch, and so after speaking at the Freedom Fund banquet, I went ahead, got back to the hotel, caught my Z's real quick, woke up around 3.30 to get to the airport by what, 5 o'clock? I arrived at the airport at 5 o'clock, and you know what happened? I get there, and y'all, there is a line all the way outside. I'm tripping because why is the line outside? And so I'm standing in line. The clock is ticking. It's now moved to 5.30. I'm going to miss my flight at 6 a.m. if I don't do anything. And so I'm standing outside. I got to go in and find out what's up. I go inside and that's when I discovered that earlier in that morning a construction worker had in the midst of construction was drilling and had hit a cable and the cable was connected to the computer system in the airport and everything was down as a consequence they could only print boarding pass they could only give you a boarding pass that was handwritten that meant the system was broken and I was precluded from taking off I got to do it one more time I could not take off even though my ticket had been paid for even though I was in the right place at the right time I could not do it because the system was broken come here because some of you been trying to figure out why it is you're not further along in your business development or education understand there is a system that is broken it's so broken that my girl Lauren Hill talks about it black rage is founded on blatant denial squeezed economics subsistence survival deafening silence and social control black rage is founded on wounds on the soul yeah that's exactly what's going down a system is broken and it has left wounds on our soul well Jesus heaven's hero and earth's emancipator Jesus in our text had already shown exactly what he could do y'all know Jesus my sisters and brothers as the great physician in a real sense had allowed the hem of his garment to bring healing to those with pre-existing conditions Jesus as the resurrection and the life had transformed funeral processions of devastating grief into festive family reunions I'm talking about Jesus who would use his culinary creativity and supernatural skills to take a two-piece and five biscuits and create a pop-up banquet in the wilderness I'm talking about Jesus who would heal the sick raised the dead walked on water and now the Bible lets us know he comes into the synagogue and sees this woman bent double the system says that she cannot get healed today but look what Jesus does Jesus the book lets us know looks at this woman notices this woman calls this woman and then tells her woman you are set free from your infir your infirmity y'all miss your shout right there Jesus spoke a word of life and liberation into her that's why you want to hear the word because if you get the word in your spirit the word has a way of speaking into your life and over your life y'all still missing your shout there's power in the word of Almighty God I got to make this real plain in a real sense the word is so powerful spoken by Jesus the word this is your first shout right here will make you woke to your possibilities in spite of your past and present predicament I got to do that one more time. That was good, Freddie Haynes. Thank you. The word will make you woke to your possibilities regardless of your past and your present pain predicament because the word basically says regardless of your used to be or what has happened, God will give you a vision through your word of what will happen and your will happen will overrule what has happened. So what has happened can't get in the way of what will happen because there's power in the word of God.
Wow. That was kind of good, huh? But hold on, because the text gets even hotter. Because the text says, Jesus says to this woman, here it is. Woman, you are set free. You didn't shout. You are set free. He speaks to her before the healing takes place. Imagine how she must have felt. She has been double, and now she hears that she's been set free. That means that God has to get the word in us because your freedom, watch this, comes from the inside out and not from the outside in. I just preached. Y'all miss your shout right there. I guess that's why Adam Clayton Powell Jr. said real freedom is not an external adjustment. It's an internal achievement. Thank you, Jesus. I love that because once you're free on the inside, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Jesus says, woman, you are, you are free. Ah, you are free. I ain't coming through, huh? You, you are free. You are, you are free. Sister Vernon, that was a hot introduction. Thank you so much, okay? But, but woman, you are free. You are free from your, he, he spoke the word. Okay, here it is. I was, I, I had to preach in, in the Bahamas uh, back in January. I, I, I was lecturing, as a matter of fact, for the Progressive National Baptist Convention midwinter, midwinter board meeting. And so I had, I had to lecture three days there uh, in January. I went to the Bahamas in January. I went to the Bahamas in January to work. Don't hate, celebrate. One day you can participate. I, I went to the Bahamas to work in January. I like working in the Bahamas in January. Yeah. But here's the trip. Here's the trip, Dr. Rob, and that is uh, when, when, when I, fl I had to fly from Dallas to Miami and then Miami to the Bahamas. Here's what happened. I land in, my, land in Miami, change planes. Once I change planes in Miami, uh, I, I, I'm on the plane in my seat waiting to take off but there's a storm raging outside, and then all of a sudden I see lightning flashing, and that's when the pilot comes over the PA system and says, I'm sorry, uh, but the airport has been shut down because we cannot fly when there's lightning in the area. And there's a little girl seated next to me. Ain't as cute as the princess right here, but she's seated next to me, and she's hyped about going to the Bahamas evidently, and she turns to her father who was seated behind me, and her mother seated behind me, or seated behind her, and she says, we're not gonna get to go to the Bahamas. And the father says, baby, don't worry. We're gonna get to go, but she just said, I hate the, but she said, I hate the lightning. Didn't you just hear the pilot say the airport is shut? Shut down and she is upset but five minutes later the pilot comes back over the PA system and says this is your captain speaking I've just received word from uh, the uh, control tower that the lightning has stopped and because the lightning has stopped even though it's still raining even though there's a storm outside we are about to take off for the Bahamas and do you know when he made that statement that the little girl seated next to me she just jumped up and said thank you Jesus she hollered thank you Jesus watch this even though there was a storm still raging but once she got word from the captain that we were still going to take off in spite of the storm she knew how to shout in a storm well I came by church tonight to simply say this is your captain speaking. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. This is your captain speaking. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. This is your captain speaking. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Once you get a word for the captain, the captain says all things work together for good to those that love God. God, this is your captain speaking, so you can be woke to your possibilities, regardless of your past and your present predicament. I got something else to say. The text says, I love this. Watch what happens. This woman is healed because Jesus spoke to her and put his hands on her. I like that Jesus spoke and gave her a hand. Y'all miss your shout. 
because if liberation is going to take place, we need folk to follow Jesus and not only speak to people, but extend a hand to people. And the text says that once Jesus did that, here comes your shout right here. Here comes the shady uh, synagogue ruler. Shady synagogue ruler. Listen what the shady synagogue ruler says. Throwing shade. Passive or passive aggressive. Shady synagogue ruler says you got six days to get healed. Don't do it on this day. And Jesus said you low life hypocrite. Don't you like that? It simply means when people, when shady people come for you, Jesus claps back on them. I just knew that would have y'all shouting, so I'm going to go ahead and shout myself. Isn't it good to know that you ain't got to clap back on haters, that God can transform your haters into your elevators? You ain't got to fight anybody back. You ain't got to cuss anybody out. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. You ain't the paymaster of eternity. I've already handled up on what's going to happen to them. Clap back is coming. Man, that keeps me going as we live with 46 minus 1 who basically has declared war on people in this country who don't agree with him and who don't look like him. 46 minus 1, does it not trip you out? He's always clapping or he's always coming for black people and questioning the intelligence of black people. He did it against Congresswoman Maxine Waters, Queen Maxine. He came for LeBron James and Don limit. He came for the NFL players who were taking a knee not to protest the flag but to protest the racial injustice that the flag is supposed to represent. 46 minus 1 keeps doing that and I'm always saying God in my prayers do you mind if I go get 46 minus 1 can I just cuss him out one time and God says no you ain't got to handle him. I'll handle him. I have the last word. He will not have the last word. Y'all missing your shout. Now go ahead and give you a shout. The shout is this. The shout is this. God has some clapback power. Amen. Have you ever had, had God do some clapback on your behalf? I'll give you what the Bible says. When God claps back on shady people, the Bible says, I love Psalm 23, he prepares the table before you in the presence of folk who can't stand you. Okay, y'all didn't get that. Let me give you the Freddie Haynes remix of that. God will throw a blessing party in your honor, but the party can't jump up until your haters RSVP. Party over here! Okay, okay. I guess y'all need a witness who can testify to this. Come here, Colin Kaepernick. Colin says, well, it's like this. The NFL colluded to keep me out of the NFL. But what they didn't know, I was getting paid all along by Nike. And then Nike signed a 10-year contract up to 2028. And guess who they made the face of their new campaign? Colin Kaepernick. And last Thursday, when football season started, Nike said, we gonna have Colin featured on a commercial because we're preparing a table for Colin in the presence of the NFL. Take that, Trump. Wait, wait, wait. God got some clapback power. God, God wanna, the Bible also says, I love this, no weapon. Ah, you didn't shout. Formed against you. It's going to prosper. It doesn't say the weapon won't form. The weapons will form, but they're not going to accomplish what they intend to accomplish. Okay, I got one more for you. Joseph, would you testify? I'll be happy to, Freddie. Well, what happened to you? My brother sold me into slavery. And they thought I was going to get him, but I didn't have to. And so they got, they got scared, and then I said, y'all, don't be scared. You meant it for evil. But God. Ah, uh, see, see, see. Uh, okay, okay, I'm talking so fast, 
you missed your shout. I'm going to talk it real slow this time. You meant it for evil, but, but, I thought I'd been here a few times. I thought y'all know where I'm going by now. But is a conjunction. I ain't smart like your pastor. He's smart. So I didn't know what a conjunction was until one Saturday morning. I'm watching cartoons back in the day. And a cartoon came on and the song said, Conjunction, Junction, was." Y'all saw that thing, didn't you? The function of a conjunction is to connect what's before with what's after. And if you have an adversative conjunction like but, yet, however, how be it, it simply means whatever's on the front side of the conjunction is about to be overruled by what's on the back side of the conjunction. Anybody ever had God insert a conjunction in the sentence of your situation? I was sick, but God healed me. I was down, but God raised me. I was broke, but God supplied all my needs according to his riches in glory. You meant it for evil, but God. That's all you need right there is but God. But God, here it is, meant it for good. I got to shout you. The word meant in Hebrew, I know I was preaching for you, Rob, so I did my homework. And the word meant in Hebrew, we get our word weave from. Weave. You meant it for evil, but God weaved it for good. You meant it for evil, but God put a weave. Keep looking my way. Don't, don't see who has a weave, okay? Just, just look my way because, because there's something good about a weave. Is a weave, weave. You ever seen someone go to the a beauty shop looking one way? But when they step out of that thing, you better work that weave. <laughs> check this out, check this out. My sister-in-law sent me, sent me this article. It's a true story. In Detroit, this happened in Detroit. Sister Rob, this happened in Detroit, okay? This sister in Detroit is on her way to, on her way home, and she's waiting on the bus. And while waiting on the bus, at the bus stop, uh, uh, she gets shot in the head. She got shot in the head, and the velocity of the bullet knocked her down. But then she got right back up. She got shot in the head, knocked down, got back up. Why? Because the bullet got stuck in the weed. <laughs> There's power in the weed. And God is so good that every now and then God is unbelievable. And when God is unbelievable, God will take what others mean to knock you back and God will bless you to come back up stronger and wiser and better. Do I have an unbelievable testimony that will testify that what they intended for evil, God worked for good because God will clap back when folk come for you. So look what Jesus does. Jesus says, so how, how you going to go off on her? Uh, you, you going off on her, but I know what y'all do for your ox and what you do for your donkey. If I was reading King James, what you do for your ass. And so you will free your ass, but want this woman still bound. So why does your ass get to be free? But the woman can't be free. That's what King James says. Don't look at me like that, okay? Uh, <laughs> So, 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 so Jesus says, what you're doing, here it is, is holding up what's legal at the expense of what's just. Because everything legal ain't necessarily just. Slavery was legal, but it wasn't just. 
apartheid in South Africa, legal, but God knows it wasn't just. Jim and Jane Crow in America, legal, but God knows it was not just. I'm just trying to let you know, three strikes and you're out, legal, but not just. The crime bill, legal, but not just. The electoral college that put 46 minus one in office, legal, but not just. But here's what gets me. When what's legal but ain't just seems to be winning, that's when God says, oh, this is so good. I'm, I, I, let me slow down. I'm about to shout. When what's legal ain't just seems to be winning, God will give those without position power. And those who have position become powerless. Okay. I'm about to shout. Because you do know the synagogue ruler, he has position. But Jesus has the power. The woman, the, the synagogue ruler has the title. But this woman now has a testimony. And God says, let them have the title. But once you have a testimony, you'll discover that when they get position, I'll still give you power. Okay, man, y'all didn't get that. So... So can, 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 I give, can, can I give it to you so you get it? Uh, uh, Y'all know Abraham Lincoln had position, but Frederick Douglass and Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman, they had the power. Y'all didn't shout. Y'all do know that Woodrow Wilson had position, but Ida B. Wells and Paul Robeson and W.E.B. Du Bois, they had the power. Y'all still missing your shout. Y'all do know that on December 1st, 1955, the bus driver in Montgomery, Alabama had position, but Rosa Parks was the one that had the power. Y'all still not shouting. Y'all do know that those vicious people that beat Fannie Lou Hamer, they had position, but guess what? They sure didn't have the power. Y'all do know that LBJ had position but Martin King had the power. Y'all still missing your shout. I'm in the Bible. Pharaoh had position but Moses had the power. Saul had position but David had the power. Nebuchadnezzar had position but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego they had the power. Pilate had position but Jesus said don't nobody take my life. I lay it down if I lay it down I'll pick it back up again all right I've held y'all too long let me wrap this watch this text says I love this right here Jesus says about the woman you free your donkey and your ox shouldn't here's your shout this daughter of Abraham be set free yeah. from what the devil did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Daughter of Abraham. Okay, okay. Daughter of Abraham. I got to shout you because you're, you're missing your shout. Jesus calls a woman a daughter of Abraham. Women in biblical antiquity were second, perhaps third class citizens. That's why Jews would pray, Jewish males would pray, Lord, I thank you that I am not a, a leper, I'm not a Gentile, and I'm not, here it is, a woman. Because women were considered on the same level with lepers. They were treated as second class citizens. But look at Jesus and oh no. I can't let you treat my sisters like that. This is a daughter of Abraham. Because sisters got some power. Y'all do know sisters got some power. I'm telling everybody in this nation. Wherever I travel. This nation has a choice it's got to make. The choice is and the future of this nation. Depends on the choice choice we'll make it's between Trump and black women I'm betting on black women because when black women do what black women do black women will stop a pedophile from reaching the Senate in the state of Alabama black women will run and become the next governor of the state of Georgia black women will run and become the first black woman of mayor of the city of San Francisco black women have got it like that so black women you keep 
keep doing what you're doing uh, because this nation is going to be saved only by the wisdom and strength and power and love and beauty of black women. So Serena, don't you let no umpire discourage you. Go ahead, break your record and take a stand for what's right because we need our black women uh, like Maxine Waters. We need our black women uh, like Keisha Lance Bottoms. We need uh, our strong uh, black women. Now brothers, let's go old school R&B. Give your baby a standing ovation. I love this. I love this because Jesus affirms her identity and it transforms her trajectory. You didn't get that, did you? Affirms her identity, daughter of Abraham, transforms her trajectory. Where's she going? Y'all still didn't shout. Who you are informs where you can go. You didn't get that, did you? Okay, uh, uh, can I go to Wakanda? Wakanda forever. And y'all, if you saw Black Panther, you should know where I'm going. Black Panther, T'Challa, is about to become the king of Wakanda. But he has to fight a challenge because you can't reach the throne without a challenge. Oh, you didn't shout. Uh, he, 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 and you can testify, Doc, we love in this facility, but you didn't get to this without some challenges. There's some challenges that you have to go through to get where God is taking you. And here comes from the mountains, Mbaku. Ooh, 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 ooh. You got me, don't you, Doc? Mbaku comes down from the mountain and Mbaku takes on, the, takes on T'Challa. And Mbaku is winning. Mbaku is beating him down and he is bear hugging him and T'Challa is leaning back and he sees his mama the queen played by the regal Angela Bassett and she shouts out to him remember who you are and then she says show him who you are and that's what I came to tell y'all tonight if we gonna win show them who you are when you go to work tomorrow show them who you are when folk try to come for you show them who you are are. Okay. All right. All right. I, I see what's going on. I, I, I thought I was going to quit on that because uh, that was real good. I thought y'all be running out of here shouting on that. And, 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 and I get why you're not, and I appreciate that. It's, it's why I miss preaching here because this pastor and, and a sp uh, predecessor have, have, have created a great preaching environment. This is a great preaching environment. It's great to preach here. Y'all, y'all, y'all are, y'all are what's up. Y'all are what's up because what y'all do when the preacher's preaching, y'all listen, getting ready to shout. That's what y'all do. Y'all are listening, but you're listening, anticipating shouting. And that's a beautiful thing because some churches listen, but they ain't thinking about shouting. You got other churches shouting and they ain't even trying to listen. And y'all are listening, and you ready to shout, but you won't shout because you're thinking. Because when you listen, you think. And that's enough to make you shout. Because thinking inevitably leads to thinking. The more you think about what God has done for you, the more you thank God for doing for you what you could do for you. Do I have some thinkers in the house? Who can testify when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. So, so, here it is. I know why you're not shouting. Because you're thinking. And I know what you're thinking. You thinking, Freddie Haynes? You ain't been here in a few years and you're going to come back here and think you're going to leave and go back to your room without telling us. Did you make it to the Time Warner building to speak at that breakfast? And y'all been sitting here the whole sermon, feeling for me, like, did he make it? Because I left you with the system broken and planes taken off without me. 
I left you there, but you've been sitting here wondering what happened. I'm glad you wondered because here's what went down. Y'all, my plane took off without me. I missed my flight, but look how good God is. I pick up my cell phone to call my contact people there in the NYC, and when, they, when I was calling them, they were calling me, and so the man who was over the program, he called me and said, Dr. Haynes, I understand that there's been a problem at your airport. Would you make the flight? I said, I'm talking to you. You know I didn't make the flight. He said, well, I understand that so don't even worry about that I said but I still want to come he said I know you want to come and you are going to come I said but the breakfast is at 8 o'clock I can't make it by 8 o'clock I'm still outside I didn't ask you what you could do I'm about to tell you what I've done I have a private jet I've sent my son from New York and he is en route right now to Connecticut he's going to pick you up and when all you have to do is go to the airstrip low located five miles from where you are and my son is going to be there and get you to where you're trying to go. I said, that is so awesome. He said, yes it is. I heard about the system there. That system is broken but we are going to overrule the system and y'all I got to the NYC. I got there and preached like I lost my mind. Why? Because here's what happened. When the system was broken, I made connection with the Father the father sent his son the son came to get me I made it where I had to go I'll see y'all next time but is there anybody here who knows if you talk to the father the father has sent his son and the son will come and take care of you and when the son takes care of you you are free to shine while others throw shade Brothers and sisters, what a word, what a word, what a word. Hey, what can we say about the Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes? I hope you were blessed tonight, be it through the ministering of music or through the spoken word. I pray that something was said and done on this revival night that has impacted your life in such a way that you won't leave this worship experience the same way that you came. Now listen, if you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, or if you're just looking for a church home, I want to invite you. I want to welcome you to Unite with the Olivet Church. You can find the information on your screen on how you can connect and be a part of this church family. I would love to be your pastor, and I would love for you to be able to call this place your church home. Church, I'm praying for you tonight, and I look forward to meeting you here again next week, same time, same place, I'm Pastor Robinson, and as always, I see you in your future, and you're looking much better than you're looking right now. Grace and peace.